So good morning. Welcome to another episode of Better Business, Better Life. And today I'm joined by the delight for Sarah Lockhead McMillan, who is the general manager of Geneva Capital. Is that right? Did I get it right this time? <laughs> That's right. Good morning. <laughs> good morning. Thank you for coming on the show. Hey, um, just give us a little bit of an understanding. Geneva Capital, what is it that they do? So Geneva Capital is a subsidiary of Geneva Finance. Yep. Um, but basically we are a small firm uh, doing business lending, but only in a set product for cash flow. Right. And that set product is? That would be called invoice financing. Okay. And so what exactly is invoice financing for those who may not know? Uh, well, a lot of people don't actually know what it is because it's not overly widely used in New Zealand, but it is in Europe and the Americas. So invoice financing is the process of releasing money from unpaid invoices. So the business can use that cash flow to grow and do other things whilst waiting for customers to pay them. Okay, that sounds like a pretty good option. Um, why might businesses want to do that? So for many of the businesses, they have to wait maybe 60 plus days to get paid. Um, we have some wholesalers who work with supermarkets can be waking, waiting up to about 75 days to get paid. Right. If you're paying your staff weekly, that is a mistiming of cash. Sure. And you always have rent and power and bills like that to pay monthly. And if you don't get paid for two months... How do you find the cash flow? So that's why businesses would use us. And we've obviously got, we're going through, I'm not sure if it's a recession or not, but certainly some challenges around a pandemic world. Has that had an effect on people making payment on their invoices? Yes, it has. Um, so interestingly, I was uh, at a presentation yesterday with the uh, Kiwi Bank economist who said, actually, the recession that they all expected didn't happen. And it was a very sharp in and out. And New Zealand businesses were quite adaptable in the way they'd coped with this pandemic. However, I think everyone is nervous. Mm. And that sheer nervousness is making people want to hold the cash when they can, which is pushing out those days to pay. Uh, we have some industries pushing out to 80 days. Wow, that's mm. huge, isn't it? That yeah. is difficult. Yeah, okay. And so how does it work? <laughs> Like in, a, in, a, in layman's terms, what, what happens? So I've got all these people who are not paying me. Yep. And I've obviously done all the things around calling them and saying, come yep. on, guys, pay your bills. But yep. the reality is we're just in the queue with everybody else. Yep. What do I do if I want to release that cash and uh, use it? So, I mean, you shouldn't not stop calling. You should still collect in your debts and still be that squeaky wheel. Mm -hmm. But um, when you've got invoices, business to business, and you're waiting on that payment, you effectively show us that ledger and we release up to 80% of that money to you. Now, your customers don't know we're there, so we're not going to collect that money for you. We're not going to add to your debtor chasing process, yeah. but we're just going to add to your cash flow. You will then use that money as you see fit. We're not going to put a, a standard on that. But any money you use will then be repaid when your debtors eventually pay. So do they then pay Geneva? Is that the way that it works? Or does it get paid back to the business owner? How does it work? So uh, we have a trust account, yep. which looks like you, the business owner, mm -hmm. but is actually controlled and reconciled by Geneva. So the customers then pay into that account and we do the reconciliation and release any free cash to you and reduce the borrowing. Hmm. So as you issue more invoices, you can make more things available to you and borrow more. As your customers pay, the borrowing gets repaid. Yeah. Okay, that's fantastic. And so what, what what are you seeing businesses using that for at the moment? You mentioned, obviously, wages being one of the – wages and rent were the, were the two key factors in most businesses. <laughs> well, yes, bills always are being paid. I yeah. guess we're seeing applications come through when businesses adapt and change. So in the pandemic, uh, businesses that were trading with supermarkets suddenly got bigger and bigger orders because people were panic buying. So the supermarkets were trying to supply – and they were going back to the people creating those products mm -hmm. and saying, look, we normally take 50 grand a week. We'd now like to take 150 grand a week, which is a huge strain on resource yeah. um, and also a huge strain on cash flow moving out in number of days to pay. So growth is, is, a, is a good one. Yeah. Um, with the other adaptability, when you see labour and labour hire, companies doing temporary labour hire have to pay workers weekly but their contracts pay them monthly. And beyond. Yes, and beyond. <laughs> yeah. Yes, definitely. Yeah. yeah. Um, so, so that change has come about. Um, and the change of people generally trying to hold their money to themselves a bit longer yeah. 
has caused payment days to spread out. And businesses are still trading and they're still doing quite well. We're not talking businesses crashing, businesses liquidating. We're talking about businesses doing well, still growing, um, still moving, still selling. But just that cycle of cash has slowed. Yeah, fair enough. Now, I normally like to ask my guests on this podcast a little bit about themselves because you haven't always worked for Geneva Capital. You've got quite a, an interesting background, haven't you? So we'd like to share a little bit about your background with us. What, all and, of it? Well, I haven't that long, <laughs> goodness sake. <laughs> no, but I'd like to a little, yeah, because people want to know who they're dealing with and, you know, what your background is, but also perhaps your professional and personal best. So what do you think is the, the best thing in your career so far and in your personal life so far? Um, so my background is generally one in finance and banking, it came into banks in the UK when I left school. So I've always sort of dabbled through the finance world some way, shape or form. Um, I did spend eight years running my own business. So for business owners that say you don't understand how hard it is, I do. I've had my house on the line. I've paid staff before I've paid myself. Mm -hmm. And I've gone to the supermarket and looked at the very cheapest things. Bottle of wine. <laughs> shh, shh. I never went to cask wine. I like that on record. <laughs> yeah. But I certainly go to the 799s. Um, so, so I know how hard that is. And I think going through that experience uh, makes you a better financier because um, obviously I'm not in a bank anymore. I'm a second tier. And I can understand the difficulties and the processes that go through that. Yeah. Um, so have I had a real career high? Yeah, potentially when I was running my own business and I was out there speaking um, two businesses about doing things better, about networking better, about things they can do for themselves uh, and learn for themselves. And that's actually how I met you, I think, first of all, wasn't yes. it? Yeah. Yes, it was. Yeah, yes. That's, oh, that's great. Okay, cool. So that's a little bit about your professional life. What about your personal life? My personal life. Oh, my God. I hear you're running a half marathon. <laughs> yes, so half marathon. About five years ago, um, as you've known me for so long, yep. you knew I was a much bigger, bigger lady. Mm -hmm. And my health became um, more of a priority to me. And so I decided to start exercising. I don't know whose stupid idea that was, but <laughs> it, I did decide to start exercising um, and, and ended up in the year, first year of doing that, of losing 43 kilos. 43 kg as well. That's pretty impressive. Well done. So, you know, and it wasn't a, oh, I lost it and I'm a, I'm a big superstar and blah, blah, blah. It was hard work, yeah. hard work. And somehow I started running in all of that. Wow. So, yes, and, and, and my friend said, don't run on the roads. It's not much fun. Let's trail run. Ah. Yeah, I don't recommend it if you don't start. <laughs> if you haven't started now, don't start, please. But, yeah, so um, that, is, that, is, that is the running that we do. Um, I think if I hadn't lost the weight, I wouldn't have found the cancer. Mm. Um, ah, yeah, tell us all about that. Yeah, so uh, that was the, the, the lump in the breast. Yeah. Um, if I'd have still been a big lady, I wouldn't have found it until it was – uh, too far gone to cure it. Yeah. So um, I was really lucky, yeah. really, really lucky. So I went through um, the operations. I went through chemotherapy. When I came out of chemotherapy the next month, I did the Auckland half marathon on the Auckland marathon day. Yeah. 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 Raised, well yeah. raised 14,000 for, for the Cancer Society. Oh, that's brilliant. Yeah. yeah. It, just, it was just so close to my heart to do something. Um, put it so I didn't run it. This is how I know you can walk some of it. Uh, we had this conversation before we came on the podcast. Yeah, I'm, I'm actually considering doing my next half marathon, but my I do not run. Yeah. No, so we um, we ran the first 11. Then from there to the next 18, it was a sort of a run walk. Yep. By the time I got to the 18, I couldn't do anything but walk. Right. But we did it. And, and it was I nearly burst into tears as I crossed over the line. I was yeah. just so relieved to get it over and done with. <laughs> um, and I usually do runs. Yep. And I enjoy enjoy them. So next weekend, it's the Rotorua Marathon, but there are different different distances to do. And I've got signed up somehow stupidly to the half marathon. It'll be fun. Um, that's quite a nice little route that they do through there as well, isn't it, in Rotorua? Uh, this one is through the forest. Normally, I do the Xterra, which is around the Blue and Green Lakes. Yep. Okay, good. Well, best of luck with that. Thank you. So yeah, so that yeah, so you've got some pretty interesting stories that you can share, and I guess you have the empathy, right? You understand what it's like for people, uh, because I think sometimes working with business owners, there's a little bit of, I'm not sure if it's ego or it's um, you know embarrassment perhaps about sort of admitting that that they're struggling a wee bit. Um, so it's nice to know they can actually come to somebody who has an understanding and has perhaps been there, done that, got the t-shirt. So sometimes I think it's it's disbelief that they've got to this stage. Yeah. 
Um, a lot of the New Zealand small to medium businesses are great at what they do and less structured around how to run that business. Yeah. And a lot of them, something will have been a catalyst mm -hmm. that they've suddenly got to this point that they need cash. Um, hopefully, mostly it's, it's growth right. and being successful. Yeah. Um, sometimes it could be they've made a mistake on one of their customers and one of their customers no longer exists, mm -hmm. um, which has put pressure on the rest of the business. Yeah. Um, but, you know, I'm not looking for them to put the house in. And I understand things like this happen. Yep. Uh, and we need to look at our credit assessments uh, and applications with a practical eye, not yeah. just a, a, a fit the box eye. And I think that's the issue with the banks at the moment. I mean, they've, they've really um, clamped down on what they will and won't do. And I've had businesses go to for bank loans and literally just been turned away, even though in actual fact they have a great business. Uh, but banks, I think, have just got, uh, I suppose they've had to tighten their belts a wee bit. So. Yeah, the banks, I mean, we always say come to us and we'll get you back to mainstream bank funding. Yeah. Um, the banks have certain credit regimes that they have to apply over the top. They've got a quite a strict capital hold that they need. Mm -hmm. They were all expecting a long recession, so um, they all tended to put some capital aside to cope with defaults. The defaults generally haven't occurred, but the sensible place to now release that is not necessarily back into businesses. Mm -hmm. um, it would be more into bricks and mortar type funding, which which of course is, is secure. It's how you get your money back if, if problems occur. Sure. So in terms of size of business that you can actually help, um, you know, what's the smallest business you've helped? What's the largest business you've helped? So we can actually help from new start upwards. Right. Um, we have a small business product, which I developed for Geneva Capital last year in conjunction with Zero, mm -hmm. so that we could fix fees in, keep costs down for businesses and help them grow through cash flow. Generally, we like to help businesses that turn over over half a million. Mm -hmm. and that's per year in sales yep. um, because it seems to work better for that sort of size of business. They've usually got five more employees um, and they trade business to business. Yeah, that's very important. OK, so I'm um, going to ask you in a moment how people get in contact with you. But what about some tips for people who are potentially thinking about how do they free up some cash for growth or maybe to, you know, to chat, to cope with the challenges of the elongated payment cycles? What would be the three tips you might give somebody that they could start to think about? So some of them they should be doing already, but it's, there's easy stuff. The first yeah. one is if customers owe you money, be the squeaky wheel. Yes, just keep asking for it. If you've delivered the service, there is no dispute. The product's there, the service is done, then you've got to ask the money you deserve to be paid. Mm -hmm. And you must keep chasing. Don't just chase seven days, 14 days, 21 days, and then forget to chase after that. Just keep saying, where is my money? Where is my money? You will get paid. And you're talking about actually picking up the phone, aren't you? I'm talking about picking up the phone, sending an email, sending statements, as many touch points as you can mm -hmm. to get your money. Yeah. You know, as you Other, said, it's your money. That's right. Otherwise, you're working for free. And I don't know many people who really want to call their business a charity. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> makes perfect sense. Great. Yep, that's the first one. <laughs> um, if you're a business that carries stock, how long has that stock been there? Mm -hmm. And if it's not perishable, then if it was bought two years ago, it's already technically been written off through the balance sheet and through the profit and loss. So sell it. Yeah. Any sale is cash back in the business. Yeah, and okay. people people do love what they think is a, a, a bargain. Well, I suppose that could also generate um, new business out of it too, right? It's sort of if you're offering um, old stock at a sort of reduced rate, it might actually prompt some of your older customers to come back for other products and services, right? Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. But also it gives you a chance to touch base with anyone who's bought from you before, yeah. regardless whether they're buying from you now or not, and say, hey, we've got these bargains. Yes, um, and people will pay for that because yeah. that, that would be payment up front. So that's more cash back into your business. That's great. Okay. And third and final? Look at what you're spending your money on. Ah, yes, <laughs> that one. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that old chestnut. <laughs> you know, when was the last time you reviewed your phone company and, and what's out there in the marketplace? Yeah. Same with your power companies, same with your stationary suppliers. And then it, look at what is being wasted. Mm-hmm. Oh, you know, are we are we spending on stationery and you actually open the cupboard door and there's already 500 boxes of paper in there? Yeah. Believe me, I um, had a very good friend. I'm sure she won't mind because it's not there anymore, but she's she's a podiatrist and one of her staff got a bargain on paper towels. Oh, no. 
which we joint. spent the next three years using up. Right. Yeah. Now that's only a very small business, but you upscale that to a factory, and you've got a hundred thousand dollars of cash sitting in paper towels. Mm-hmm. Yep, makes absolutely no sense. Yep. So, so, so is, there a, is there a method you can use to sort of check? I mean, what would you do to check that out? Um, if it was internal like that, um, just a simple stock system, you know, how low do you need to get before you reorder? Yeah. And then you can put a card in there or, or whoever's in charge of that can know that once a week they look at that and say, okay, there's one box of paper and I know we usually use three a week, so I do need to order two, or I need to order three, so I've always got one and behind, yeah, yeah. not I need to order 20 and we're done for the month. Yeah, because yeah, you're right, because that takes away cash that you could be spending. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. Okay, great. And so if somebody is thinking about invoice financing, what is the process they would actually go through? So they would, I don't know, pick up the phone for like a contact um, form, what would they do? <laughs> yeah, well, they, they, can, they can pick up the phone to me direct if I'm allowed to give out my number. Absolutely, yeah. Okay, so, so the number is 21 Yep. Four six two eight one eight, okay. and just chat. Yep. Happy to do that to anyone. Mm-hmm. They can go to the website, genevacapital.co.nz, and actually fill out either a contact form or the quote form, yep. and upload some financials to that, and we'll get straight back to them. And does that hook into your zero or your MYB, or do the, you just no? Uh, though, those ones is is totally in that customer's control yep. about what they're uploading. We don't hook into their zero until they're our customers. Right. Um, if they talk to me, I, will, I can email a Zero link, which Zero has devised a business finance report pack. Yep. It's great. They just follow the link. It makes up a pack from their financials and you just send that to us. And it's everything we need to say, okay, this is what we can do for you and this is how much it's going to cost. Excellent. Okay. So they speak to you, they fill out the form of they do. What's the next step from there? Um, from there, we do a standard application. Every finance company has an application form. Yep. Um, and we'll do an assessment on the information that's given to us. And usually within the week, if there's no adverse information, we can be putting paperwork in front of their solicitors. And the next week, they can be using money. Oh, that's fantastic. Okay, great. Well, look, thank you so much for coming and explaining that to me. Thank like you. I said, I think there's often there's often a bit of a, a sense that, you know, if you have to go and get help that you're in trouble. But in actual fact, this is just about using money more wisely, isn't it? Correct. And look, just because the bank said no doesn't mean you are a bad prospect for lending. Yep. It just means you don't meet certain criteria. That so come and talk to us. Yeah, fantastic. Well, look, thank you so much for sharing that. Thank Thanks you. for the three tips. Look forward to seeing you again soon. Thanks, Deborah. Thanks a lot.